Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are finally sitting down, or I'm finally sitting down, to do the Allure Best of Beauty Award winners for the high-end category. There are so many products that I ordered that I have in front of me. There are so many things to try. This is one of my favorite videos to film every single year. I do feel like I usually find some incredible products from discovering and trying out the products that won Allure Best of Beauty Awards. So I already did my drugstore version. If you didn't see that yet, I will have it linked down below. That one, you know, there were some things that I really enjoyed. I was a little bit disappointed, as you know if you watched the video, in like, the lack of products from the drugstore this year. I just am such a fan of the drugstore that I feel like they deserve more and that there are more award-winning products there. Just cause there's like some drugstore products that in my opinion are better than high-end. And I just wish some of those things that are in my mind won awards and got the recognition that they deserved. And I don't know, just like doing this haul for the high-end version, I feel like there's so much time and effort put in here. Um, there's some new brands that I've never heard of before that I was excited to dip into. So this one is already a little more exciting. The drugstore one, not so much. Let's have our fingers crossed for next year that there will be more options for us in the drugstore category. But you guys know at the end of the year, I personally do the best of beauty and I do drugstore, high end, and then hair, skin, and nails. So that's my opportunity to really give certain products my own personal award, if you will. So anyway, we're just gonna get right into it. This is gonna be a little bit of a longer video regardless, just because there's so many things to try. I won't be doing like a wear test because I don't find that like, like if I try a full, full face of so many new products, um, that a full wear test really gives me an idea of what product did what. However, I will make sure to give you guys my opinions based off my first impressions as we go along. So normally I do my eyes first, but I'm just feeling like I should get the complexion going first today. When I film these videos in the past, I do like to sometimes throw in just little my stamp of approvals on things that have won awards that I already love and use. And one of those things is this right here, you guys. It's the Kinship Self Reflect sunscreen. This won an award and I was so thrilled because it's truly one of my favorite sunscreens out there. I love it. So I was so happy to see that that won an award. Um, I realized that I missed kind of a whole category when I filmed my drugstore one. They did like this Hall of Fame thing this year and there were a couple more drugstore products. It was like a L'Oreal powder in there that I wish I would have seen. Um, but anyway, one of the Hall of Fame products is the Complexion Rescue from Bare Minerals. You guys know I love this. Um, the Hall of Fame just means it's like products that keep winning awards over and over and over. And this has been in my routine for years and years and years. And I'm glad that it gets the Hall of Fame award because I would personally give this a Hall of Fame award. Okay, so I've got three primers right here. I'm obviously not gonna be able to use all of them. Well, no, I think I'm just gonna use two of them. Um, I bought one of them and two of them I actually had already received in PR a while back. So one of the products that won is the Makeup Forever Hydra Booster. Um, primer. I used to use this all the time. I don't know if this is a new formulation or not. I need to like really do a deep dive, but Makeup Forever makes great primers. Um, the next one was the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer. I actually haven't tried this yet. I think I might layer this on top of the other product that I bought, um, but this won an award as well, obviously. So this product, you guys, okay, so this video kind of gave me an excuse to finally take the plunge and purchase this. I've heard quite a few people rave about this, um, specifically Michelle Wong here on YouTube. She loves this product and um, she made me wanna buy this a while back and then I just never did because it's pricey. This is from Victoria Beckham. It is the Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. It's supposed to be amazing. It is super expensive. <laughs> but again, like this video, I don't know, it just kind of like gave me permission, I guess, to try it out finally. So we're gonna start with this. The packaging feels nice and luxe. I bought the one ounce bottle. They have a few sizes, but I was looking at like the price difference versus the size and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for the one ounce. It just seemed like a better deal, <laughs> even though it was still pretty pricey compared to the smaller size. So I put about one and a half pumps on my hands. It feels like a lotion. I only did like a lightweight lotion today so I could really get a feel for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this all over. It's a nice texture. It's not too rich feeling, but it's also not too lightweight. It's right in the middle. And now it's kind of drying down. That's really interesting. These are products that will take me a few times individually to really get my opinion on, but I think that looks nice. It left a nice glow. Let's go ahead and apply a little bit of this. 
the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer. I'm just gonna apply this in the T-zone. So I just took like a pea-sized amount and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this in just the areas that I have larger pores. Okay, that feels really nice. It felt super emollient at first, but it's definitely dried down. I'm interested to see how that looks underneath foundation. Okay, so for foundation, I was actually super excited to see that the LYS Beauty or List Beauty, I'm not sure how they say it, um, but this foundation won an award. This is another product that I've wanted to try for a long time, so I finally was able to pick it up. Um, there were other foundation products that won an award, like the Estee Lauder Double Wear um, Sheer Longwear Makeup. I've been really enjoying this. It's a pretty new product, but I do really love that, and also, I think in the clean category was the Say Slip Cover, another product that I really enjoy. This one's not as long wearing on me, but there's a time and place for that. You know, when you're running errands and you just wanna kind of even out your skin tone, this is a really great one. So those were some other products that won awards that I wanted to mention, but I'm definitely gonna try out the LYS Beauty Triple Fix Serum Foundation. I've heard such good things about this. I actually bought two shades. So I'm gonna do a little shade matching right now. So this is LN6. I'm not sure if this is gonna be too deep or not. So here's LN6. That feels like it's actually a pretty good match. And then I bought LM3, which is a bit lighter. Okay, honestly, I feel like I could get away with both. I'm gonna let it sit there for a while, see if um, the lighter one oxidizes at all. And then I will choose. <laughs> honestly, I feel like I could mix the two, but it's probably not as helpful for you guys. Okay, so they're oxidizing quite a bit. This one now looks pretty dark. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Once I blended it out though, it seems fine. I do have quite a bit of a lighter shade concealer. So I think I'll go with LN6, even though it could be a little dark, but maybe it will balance out a little more like when I apply that lighter concealer. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply this with a foundation brush. It's super pigmented. I'm not even using that much at all. And it's giving me quite a bit of coverage. This is one of the things I was the most excited to try. It's just been on my like makeup bucket list for a while now. I'm gonna take what's left on my sponge and then press that into the skin and then we'll compare both sides of the face. Wow, that looks so nice. I love how it just kind of evened out the skin tone. I hardly put that much on at all, um, but it gave me quite a bit of coverage. Like you'll see compared to this side of the face how much more even toned this is, but it doesn't look heavy and it doesn't feel heavy. That's so nice. Yeah, I think that this shade actually works well if I use a smaller amount like I did. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Hopefully you get a good feel for how that looks in comparison to my bare skin. Let's go ahead and add more to this side. Wow, this is looking super nice. Oh my gosh, I really like how this looks. I was expecting it to be a lot heavier feeling, um, but and I'm sure you could build it up, but I just didn't wanna go overboard since I'm gonna be trying so many products today and I love how that looks, oh my gosh. I mean, obviously a foundation needs to wear well on me as well, but for my first impressions, this is super nice. Okay, for under eye concealer, I bought this. This won an award, obviously. Here, I'll hold it over here so you can see the little award right here. This is the Beauty Counter Skin Twin Creamy Concealer. I picked mine up in the shade, what is this, Fair One. Pretty packaging, I really like this. So I'm gonna apply this to the under eyes. And that just reminded me actually, there was another concealer that won an award from Bodyography and it won for like blemish concealer. I didn't end up picking that up because I just thought that I wouldn't need to try two concealers, but then they actually sent me a package recently with the concealer in it. So I might go run and grab that. I just remembered. I think it'd be fun to try both. Okay, I'm just gonna blend this out with my sponge underneath my eye. I'm gonna take what's left and cancel out any discoloration on the eyelid with this. I would say this is more of like a medium coverage concealer, but it looks super fresh. Like it definitely made my eyes look more awake and brightened them, but it doesn't look or feel heavy either. That's actually really nice. Okay, let me go find that Bodyography concealer before I forget. Okay, that took me a minute, but I found the box. See, it's an award winner. Let me find a good shade for me. This was perfect timing, Bodyography. Thank you for sending this to me. Okay, so I grabbed, this is L3. I think I'll be L2. So this specifically won as best blemish concealer. So I'm gonna try to use it over top of any blemishes. Well, hmm, I might try L3 actually for blemishes because I want it to match the foundation a little more. Hmm, that's a little bit too deep. We are switching gears, moving to L2. And I'm just gonna kind of spot conceal any areas that I want more coverage. 
I'm just gonna press that in with my sponge. The shade, when it dries down, dries down a little deeper than what it looks like in the tube, so just keep that in mind. Wow, that really did add beautiful coverage, but not extra like weight to the skin. That's like a theme I'm noticing so far with these products. Really rich in pigment, but not heavy on the skin. I'm glad we tried that, that was nice. Okay, so there's quite a few winners in the bronzer category. I'm gonna share with you one of my favorites. I was so happy to see that Patrick Ta won an award. This right here, the bronzer cream contour duo, it's incredible, I love it so much. If you haven't tried this yet, it really does deserve an award. It's amazing, I love it. Another cream bronzer that won, and this is the one that I'm gonna try out today, is from M Cosmetics. I was super happy to see M Cosmetics won an award because it's one of my favorite brands, actually. I feel like they create such beautiful, really well thought out formulas and products. So we're gonna try this right now. This is the M Cosmetics So Soft Multi Face Play Bronzers. And I grabbed two shades. So there's one that's more cool toned and one that's more warm toned. I think I wanna play with the more cool toned one. Yeah, so summer is a little more warm toned, which we have a powder bronzer that I'm gonna use later. So I'm gonna to try to use just like the cooler tone, which is called Terra to sculpt. So here's what it looks like. There are two other shades in this range as well. This is supposed to be good for fair to medium skin tones. I'm just kind of applying it on the brush and then meshing it into the back of my hand before going into the face with this just so I don't accidentally overdo it, since I do have more fair skin. Wow, it's very cloud-like. Sometimes cream contour and bronzers can intimidate me, because I tend to have a heavy hand on accident. But that looks so natural and really nice. Whoops, I got a little too much over there. As you can see, it just blends itself out. Wow, I think that's about all I want. That didn't take long at all to create really nice soft structure to the skin. I am gonna go into my sponge, just around the edges like always. Okay, another Hall of Fame product that I'm gonna actually try out is from Makeup Forever. So this is the loose powder. It's the Makeup Forever HD Micro Finish Powder. I've heard so many mixed things about this. I'm pretty sure this is the HD powder that can get flashback if applied incorrectly. I hear, I think it's this one. Um, so I just bought the mini size just to see, you know, how I end up liking this. So here it is in all its glory. Again, this is the smaller size. So the other one is probably like a full size powder container, a little ASMR for you. <laughs> wow, it's very micro fine. I'm wanting to use this under my eyes mostly. Let me take that on a small brush. Wow, that concealer looks super nice. It's almost like I don't need to set it, but I'm going to. Just taking a tiny bit and setting the under eye area with this. We'll set the T-zone too. Wow. Okay, I can see why this is so popular, especially among makeup artists. It's virtually indetectable on the skin. I guess I'll have to test the flashback sometime, but it's really rare that I'm in flash photos anymore, and usually when I am, I know I'm going to be, and I have like my go-to makeup for pictures, but wow. That is so nice. I'm so late to the game on this one. This has been around for a long, long time. That is one of the most lightweight powders I've ever put on my face. I'm so into this. Okay, I'm just gonna take my sponge and press over that. Not that it really needs it because there's not a powdery finish, but I'm just doing it out of habit. So another foundation that one that I wanted to share is this right here, the One Size Beauty Powder Foundation. I really, really like this. I don't use it all over the face as a foundation. I like to use it to brighten the under eye area, which I'm not gonna do today because I've used this in my videos a few times because I really wanna see how that Makeup Forever powder works, but I was happy to see that one of Patrick Starr's products won an award, that's so fun. Okay, the pressed powder that won an award is a bougie one. It's from Giorgio Armani. It's the Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder. I'm pretty sure this is the right one, right? It looks like this. I don't really know how I'm supposed to use this. I'm gonna kind of swatch it. It looks like an interesting texture. It's almost got this creaminess to it. Hmm, okay, I'm gonna use this on the outer portions of my face to kind of set things a little bit. There's quite a bit of a glow to it, you see that? Let me swatch this. Interesting, I don't know, I can't tell what the formula is. It almost looks like it's a cream, but then it's not. <laughs> I'm just kind of shaping out underneath those cheekbones with this. I'm gonna kind of keep it away from the under eyes because I really wanna see that Makeup Forever powder in the middle. 
This is another one of those products that I'm probably gonna have to like use for a while to see if it really makes a difference because this one was pretty expensive. So if it's not incredible, it might not be worth it, but hmm, I really like the glow it gave. I can see it on my forehead. Interesting, there it is. I really can't tell yet on that product, but that's how these videos go. There's just so many things I'm trying sometimes that it's hard to like figure out what looks good or maybe what doesn't look good if something doesn't. All right, we're gonna move to bronzer. I was actually really excited about this even though this was also a pretty penny. This is one of my first, I think I actually bought the Guerlain foundation, which I'm still not sure if I like or not. The shade doesn't really match me. You know how that can happen sometimes, like if your foundation shade doesn't match, sometimes you can't tell if you like the formula or not. Anyway, I picked this up. This is the Guerlain Terracotta Bronzer, the bronzing powder. I've heard so many things about the original Terracotta Guerlain Bronzer, um, but they actually have a bunch of shades now. I didn't realize that. I never bought it because it just looked too deep for me, but I bought the shade 00 Light Cool. Packaging is cool. Look at that inside. It's really interesting. And then here it is. This looks like a bronzer that will actually work for me. Let's see. It has a very, very heavy scent to it. Since I did not ever try the original, I cannot give like a comparison. So let's just apply this all over the skin to warm things up. It's adding a really nice kind of terracotta warmth to my skin, but it actually works with my skin tone, which I really like. Like it's not too overpowering at all. Just blending that down the neck a little bit. Yeah, that's really nice. I'm gonna take my powder brush and just blend out the edges. That looks really pretty. I feel like with these Armani and Guerlain products, like I'm gonna have to really give them a fair shot before saying like that I recommend them to you guys because that's just, you know, designer brands, super high end prices. So if I love it, then I feel like it's worth splurging on, but it might take a while for that. Except for like the Gucci bronzer, that is a bronzer that like I would buy forever even though it's quite the splurge. To me, the fair tone, like the first one, is one of the best tones and undertones that I've ever put on my face. So sometimes in my opinion, the high end stuff is worth it. Other times there's better at the drugstore. It just depends on the product. All right, let's see what's next. You know what, let's do brows and eyes next. I wanted to give a little shout out to the Joey Healy Brow Powder. This is a product that won last year and I won again this year. Um, I actually really loved this product when I tried it last year. I love the tone, the undertone. It just, I don't know, the brow powder did something really nice for my brows. So I wanted to give that a nice shout out again. There's quite a few brow products actually. The House Labs Brow Pencil won an award. I might mix a couple of these things because there's just so much for the brow category for high end that I'm gonna have to mix a couple. Um, the Benefit Brow Pomade, which is something that I've never tried before. So I think I might use this with the pencil. And then we've got the Kosas Air Brow, which won the Tinted Brow Gel Award. I'm pretty sure that's what it won. And, you know, if I'm honest, I don't really use tinted brow gels as much as clear. So for the clear brow gel, it was this right here from Charlotte Tilbury, the Brow Fix Clear Brow Gel. So let's go ahead and do our brows. This Benefit Brow Pomade is one of the things that was sent to me in PR a while ago and I've wanted to try it for a, a hot minute, just haven't gotten around to it. So I'm really happy that they sent it to me so I could try it for this video. All right, so I'm gonna use the shade number four. I opened this up earlier and really liked the inside. Look at this, see how there's like a nice rim on the outside to kind of clean off your brush? I think that's really innovative. Oh, I forgot to mention you guys, this is the, by the way, this is just the angled brow brush that Benefit makes. I totally spaced one of my favorite parts about these videos, and that's a nail polish. So there were quite a few nail polish colors that won awards, and I picked a nail polish up for the drugstore version of this and completely spaced making sure to get a nail polish for this. So I was a little bit bummed about that, but it is what it is, I guess. And there's so many products I'm talking about anyway. Hopefully you won't miss me trying a nail polish, but I'm, upset a little bit that I forgot. If you guys want to see what nail polish is one and what one in the nail category in general, then I will have the Allure list or website down below so you can try everything. That looks really nice. I love Benefit brow products, so I had high hopes for this. You'll notice I'm just doing the edge because I do want to try out that House Labs pencil for the front of my brows. I used to use brow pomade all the time 
It has been a hot minute, but I'm really liking how this is looking. All right, I grabbed the House Labs pencil in the shade medium brown. This was also sent to me in PR, which makes it so helpful for these videos because there's just so many products to try. So I'm gonna use this in the rest of my brow. It's doing what I was hoping it would do and creating really nice little feathery strokes. Wow, okay, I think my brows turned out nice. Brow products are something that I'm pretty like loyal to, so I feel like I was a little more excited about the pomade just because I used to use it all the time, but that pencil went on really nice. I like how it was able to brush out and kind of fade a little bit in the center portion. All right, so let's move into eyeshadow. So this is one of the brands that I was super excited to try because I had never heard it before. So this is one of the eyeshadow palettes that won. This is the Sweet Street LA Lady eyeshadow palette. I don't know, I really like when they include brands that aren't as well known. It's just more exciting for me. So here it is, look how cute this packaging is. Oh my gosh, wow, the pan size is way bigger than I had pictured just by looking at the picture online. It's a gorgeous, just neutral palette. So I'm super excited to try this out. Let's start out with the shade Boulevard. I'm just gonna use this to kind of create a canvas all over the lid and to kind of set down any concealer that's left there. Next, I'm just gonna take the same brush and dip into Rivi. Ooh, whoa, as I dropped my brush. I'm just blending that through the crease and a little bit above as my transition. I'm pinching the brush and applying the same shade to the lower lash line. I'm gonna dip into the shade Dusk and I'm gonna start deepening up the outer portion of the eye with this. These shadows are really pigmented. Just pinching the brush again and going underneath that lower lash line. And then I'm gonna take my finger and dip into the shade Sun. <gasps> Ooh, the metallics feel so buttery. Look at that, oh my goodness. I'm gonna take some of that and apply it to the lid. Wow, this is such a flattering color scheme. I really love that it's just a neutral palette. Those are the kinds of palettes that I personally reach for all the time. Taking that on a smaller brush and just applying it to the lower lash line. Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna take the shade Shine, which was the lightest shimmer shade. So there's actually six mattes, two shimmers, which is pretty cool, because honestly, I don't really use more than two shimmers in an eye look at a time, usually. I'm, I'm just taking this color and applying it to the inner corner. That's so beautiful. And I'm also going to use what's left to highlight the brow bone. I have been dying to try this product as well. This is the Danessa Myricks. Twin Flames Multi Chrome Pigment. This won an award for Liquid Shadow. Um, I just bought one shade. I bought the shade Amour. This could be very interesting because it's a little bit more of like a cool toned, um, kind of a shifty pigment. Here, I'll show you up close. I don't know if you'll be able to see exactly the Multi Chrome in the bottle the way I can in person, but there's a little bit of blue in here. So I don't really know if it's gonna look super strange. Do you see that? It's so cool. It's like a, yeah, it's like a, Purple, why is it coming across so gold on camera? It's literally purple. So this could look very strange, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I could have chosen a color that would have worked better with this eye look, but I wanted to pick a color that I would actually use, you know? Okay, that kind of just like neutralized the gold. It doesn't actually look that crazy. You can definitely see that blue shift, but since there's a gold base underneath, it kind of muted it a little bit. But yeah, I've wanted to try these for so long. I am just like a sucker for dual chrome anything. It's kind of interesting. I was almost expecting it to be a little more glittery, but this shade actually isn't super glittery. It's more of just like a liquid shimmer. Super pretty though. I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and kind of blend out the edges. Kind of a strange color combination, but gotta do what you gotta do for the video. I still think it looks really pretty. I would be so interested to see how it would look by itself. I'm sure it'd be so vibrant. Cause when I swatched it on the back of my hand, it was like super vibrant blue purple shift, which was pretty. There were a lot of eyeliners that won, but I didn't buy all of them. Cause I'm not a huge eyeliner person. However, I did end up picking up the Jones Road eyeliner in the shade brown. Um, this one best eyeliner in the clean makeup category. I personally really love Jones Road and I've been wanting to try the brown liner for a while. So this was my excuse to try this out. So here it is, it's just a basic wooden pencil. I'm excited though. So I'm just gonna line the entire top lash line with this. Okay, so that went on nicely. It's definitely more of a 
stiff formula versus some of my other eyeliners that have more of like that gel feel to it. But I actually like that about Jones Road. I feel like Bobbi Brown, she's the creator of this brand. She kind of sticks to really classic formulas, which I really like. So there it is, there's the eyeliner. All right, let's move into mascara. So there was actually a couple mascaras that won. One of them being the YSL Beauty Radical Volumizing Mascara. I was going to buy this and then it didn't have the best reviews. And there was another mascara that I was a little more interested to try. And that was the Merit Clean Lash. This one I think in the clean makeup category. So I picked this up. And then also there was a lash primer that won an award. The Lancome Sil Booster XL. I'm gonna try this. This was actually sent to me in PR and I haven't tried it yet. So we're gonna try both of these together. I feel like there was another mascara too. Let me check. Oh yeah, the Benefit They're Real Magnet Lengthening Mascara also won. Ooh, look at this packaging for Merit. Um, but I haven't tried that mascara yet. So I just felt like it would be a little overwhelming for me to try to, you know, test out three or four different mascaras today. So we're gonna try out the primer. I'm not usually a lash primer person, but it's worth a shot. I'm only going to apply the primer on the top lashes because I don't really need my lower lashes any longer. Okay, there's the primer. Looks super interesting by itself right now. We're gonna go into this Merit Mascara. Ooh, here's the brush. Just looks pretty classic. I always like to smell my mascara, I don't know why. It smells like a classic mascara. All right, let's apply this on top of that primer. This Merit Mascara feels very silky. It's going on really, really beautifully. It just kind of gently builds up on itself. It doesn't really clump or anything, but it also gives really great length. Wow, let's do the same thing on this eye. I feel like that primer must have done something right as well. It seems like they're layering up together really well. Mascaras take me, you know, several weeks sometimes to really get my opinion. Sometimes I can tell that I don't like it if it smudges or flakes in the first 24 hours of me wearing it. Not that I wear mascara for 24 hours, but you know what I mean, like the first time wearing it, I can usually get a good feel for how it will work for me. If it smudges or flakes, then it's like, I don't reach for it again. But if it doesn't, it still takes me a while to see if it ever will smudge or flake. You know what I mean? I like that. I really love the packaging of this. I'm a sucker for packaging. Okay, let's move on to blush and highlighter. I'm gonna do highlight first. There was a highlighter, you guys, I will show you. I obviously didn't buy every single product that won an award. That would be like way too much. I'll put it up here. It's the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Tinted Highlight. It looks beautiful, but it was $75 and I just, I don't know. Like I'm all about splurging on makeup, but for some reason I couldn't get myself to drop $75 for a tinted highlighter that I just, I don't know. I would have to like really, really want it to drop that much money and I just wasn't ready. So. That's an honorable mention. The highlight that I ended up picking up though was from Pat McGrath. So, you know, not the cheapest either, but I love Pat McGrath. So it was easier for me to spend money on this. It's the Ultra Glow Highlighter and it's in the shade Divine Rose. I'm hoping this isn't too deep for me, but if it is, oh well. Gorgeous pink packaging, I love this. Ooh, ooh, it kind of has like a nice pink gold shift. Oh, it's buttery soft. Pat McGrath. She just, uh, she's incredible. Okay, I'm gonna take this on a highlight brush, tap off the excess and start to apply it on the high points of the face. It has a gorgeous pink and gold shift, which I was afraid would be too deep looking forward, but since it has a pink undertone, it actually doesn't bother me at all. I'm gonna put a little bit down the center of the nose. Ooh, I've actually never tried a highlight from Pat McGrath before. So I'm really excited about this one. Pretty, okay. So for blush, there were a few blushes that won, and again, you guys can check out the entire list. I'm not gonna mention every single product here, but one of the blushes that won is this right here from Rare Beauty. It's the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Melting Blush. I really do like this formula. I find that it doesn't last the longest. So if you're looking for something that's gonna really give longevity, that's great. This is more of like a everyday running errands product for me. Another one that won an award, and I think this was in the clean beauty category, is the Tower 28 blushes. These are amazing. This is one of my favorite shades, Magic Hour. And then I was so excited about this award because I'm obsessed with this blush. I could have given myself permission to buy more shades, but I was like, uh, I'm buying so much makeup for this video that I just didn't. I just kept the shade that I personally love. I only have one actually. 
It's the Makeup by Mario blush. I was so excited. I have the shade Mellow Mauve. I want to try more shades, maybe one day, but I didn't feel like I needed to buy an entirely new shade just for the video since I do love this one so much. So I'm just gonna smile and apply this to the cheeks. I'm obsessed with that. I love it. We are nearing the end here, folks. I'm gonna go ahead and do some lip products. And there's a lot of different lip products that won. One of them being the um, Dior lip oil, which I'll put up here. I have that, I really love it, and couldn't find it today. It's probably in one of my purses somewhere, I thought. I looked through the majority of my purses, um, but it could be anywhere. So I really do love that product. Was happy to see that it won an award. Another one that I really do love that one is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm Color. This is the cream one. So this won an award. I don't know if it was a specific shade or not. I don't think so. This is Fenty Glow. Such a good product. Um, but I wanted to try out a couple of lip products that intrigued me the most. The lipstick that won Best Berry was actually one from Bite Beauty. So I bought this. I have heard good things about these lipsticks and I haven't tried them yet. So I bought the shade that won, which is Mulberry, and it's supposed to be the best berry lipstick. So we're gonna see. Here's the packaging. Ooh, I haven't opened this yet. That's gorgeous, okay. Um, so there wasn't a lip liner that I personally saw that won an award, I could be wrong, but I didn't see any, I don't think. So we're just gonna apply this directly to the lips. Ooh, it's a little brighter than I thought it would be just based off of looking at it, but so pretty. Pretend I have a lip liner on. <laughs> so that my lip lines aren't like this. Wow, that's really nice. The formula feels really nice as well. This is definitely a color that I would wear on its own, and what I mean by that is like, not much on the eyes, really fresh skin. And then this color, that's really nice, really pretty. I don't wear berry lipsticks as much as I used to. This is making me want to. Okay, the next product for lips that I bought, I only bought two. I felt like that was plenty <laughs> for this video. But again, there's so many other different reds and things like that that won awards. Um, but I really wanted to try this out. This is from Gucci, so, you know, a little bougie, but this is the Gucci Rouge de Beauté Brilliant Glow and Care Shine Lipstick. And I bought mine in the shade Call It A Day. Ooh, ooh, the packaging, how fun is that? It's very heavy. Ooh, look at that color. I was the most excited about this color when I saw all the shades on Sephora. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. It is highly, highly fragranced. <laughs> so not my personal favorite one. I hate when like there's fragrance in a lip product that's super strong because I can taste it almost. But for that color, I'll wear it. Wow, mm, it feels so nice on the lips too. I'm gonna kind of dab it off so I can put lip liner on because I want to wear that. Just applying a little lip liner. This is Wherever Walnut from Makeup Forever. That is so nice. I love lip products like this. Like soft, balmy, moisturizing lipsticks. I'm obsessed. Okay, last but not least, we've got setting spray, but let's assess the situation really fast. My skin is looking quite dewy, but I'm just adding a little more bronzer with what's left on the brush. And you know what? I might actually take a little bit of my one size powder foundation just to kind of take down some of the shine on the forehead and right here around the nose and the smile lines. I think that's good. I like where the blush is at. So the setting spray that won Best Dewy Setting Spray is from MAC. It's the Fix Plus All Day Hydrating Spray. Magic Radiance something something. I've never tried this, but I was really excited about it because I really do love Fix Plus, but this is supposed to be even dewier than Fix Plus. Let's prime the pump and let's spray the face. Okay, once that's on, I'm just gonna take my sponge and press that down. Okay, there's that. I don't wanna forget to set my brows with the Charlotte Tilbury Clear Brow Gel, the Brow Fix. So I'm just gonna run that through the brows. I feel like I've tried this before, but I can't remember how I feel about it. It was a while ago if I did try it. All right, you guys, so we've made it to the end of trying all the products that I bought that won awards from the Allure Best of Beauty awards list, I guess. Things are looking super, super healthy. I actually really like so many things about what we tried today. Let's go ahead and go through really quickly for my first impressions, each of these items. Again, you guys, I'm gonna have to like take some time with these products 
using them with products I'm familiar with to really see how they work. But I do have certain products that I'm extra excited about based off of my first impressions. So starting off with primers, I am actually really interested to see if this does anything for me like and my skin because I know it's supposed to be a pretty bougie formula and really nice for your skin. I've heard great things about it. So I'm super excited about this. I also really liked how this felt. So I'll get back to you guys. I am not always one to use super blurring primers, but I liked the unique formula of this. So I have high hopes for those two. I gotta say the foundation is what I'm super excited about the List Triple Fix Foundation. I didn't use that much at all and it gave great coverage, but it looks so fresh on the skin and it feels very lightweight, which is something that I really love. I love when I don't have to layer up foundation too much, um, but it gives me really natural looking coverage because I do want to cover up acne scars and things like that. So can't wait to see how this wears. I really hope it works for me long term. There's actually a lot of beautiful things. The Beauty Counter Concealer, I actually really love how it looks under my eyes, up close especially. It's not the most full coverage concealer, but it gives enough brightness and it looks like you're not even wearing concealer, which is what I like about it. So I will definitely be wearing this again. The Bodyography Blemish Concealer had a lot of pigment to it, but again, was really thin and looked very natural on the skin. So I'm gonna keep trying this. I'm gonna have to try it on a day where I have a pretty large spot or blemish to really get a feel for how it works over blemishes. But yeah, I didn't have anything bad to say about that. The Makeup Forever Powder under the eyes, are you kidding me? It looks gorgeous. I feel like that's partially what I love about the under eye area. So I actually don't mind that I bought the smaller size because I feel like I will probably use this mostly just under the eye area, but I did love how it smoothed the T-zone and it basically looks like I didn't use powder. So if you're into that, I think you'd really love this. I know a lot of people have probably already tried that, but I didn't until today. The Armani Luminous Silk Powder, such an interesting kind of creamy, but still powder formula that has a really nice sheen to it. I'm gonna have to keep trying this and let you guys know if I end up using it. I do enjoy more of a luminous powder for a finishing powder, um, but this does have a little bit of coverage to it, it seems like. So yeah, I, I liked it. I just need to like really give it a chance and wear it all day for a few days to really see if it makes a difference. Sometimes it's hard to tell with finishing powders like that. The Terracotta Bronzer from Guerlain. I actually feel like it looks really healthy and natural on my skin. If you're somebody who likes more of a warm tone, uh, but you are more fair skin, even though this says cool tone, it has more of a warm tone, in my opinion. I don't think it's very cool tone. So if you like warm tones, but you're very fair skin, you have a hard time finding a warm tone bronzer that doesn't look super, super red on you, you might like this. I'm gonna have to keep using this because it is so high end. I really wanna be careful before saying like, oh, you need it because I feel that way about the Gucci bronzer. We'll see how the girl on one compares or like fits in my routine, you know? This brow pomade actually is so nice. Paired with that brush, especially from Benefit, I definitely think I'm gonna reach into this again. The brow pencil from House Labs, we're gonna have to see I'm just like so stuck on certain brow pencils that it's hard for me to like replace them, but I did like how it applied. I liked how it blended out, but I will say I'm more excited about the brow pomade than the pencil. The Sweet Street eyeshadow palette. This was so beautiful. Definitely something that, you know, a lot of us would be able to use on a daily basis. The mattes blended out really beautifully, but the shimmers are where I was really excited. Really loved how buttery those felt. I actually am excited to keep using this. I thought that the tones were very flattering. It's definitely more of a warm toned neutral palette. So if you're into more warm tones, you might really enjoy this. I typically reach for more cool tones on an everyday basis, but this is beautiful. Um, and I'm excited to have it in my collection. This was something that I was really looking forward to try just because it was from a brand that I had never heard of. So that for me, as somebody who reviews makeup all day every day, was really exciting to try something from a brand that was completely new to me. The Jones Road pencil went on really nicely. I don't know if it's a need necessarily because um, it's a pretty just normal eyeliner pencil, but I'll keep you posted, you know. I'm not huge on eyeliner, so I feel like I'm not the best for recommending eyeliners either. I just don't wear it enough. The Lancome primer did something to my lashes. I feel like it 
really did make them more plush. I'm gonna have to try this with a mascara that I've tried before because it was a little hard for me to see what the primer was doing, what the mascara was doing. I probably should have done an eye with no primer and one with, but oh well. The Merit mascara, I actually really like the packaging mostly. I will get back to you guys on how it wears. Um, I'll leave a little note in the description box down below if it's smudged or flaked by the end of the night tonight. But again, it's gonna take me a while to get like a solid review on that. Oh, I almost forgot the M Cosmetics Terra Contour Stick. I am so excited to use this again. I mean, you guys saw how effortlessly it blended out on my skin and the tone and undertone was really nice. I love how it sheared out and didn't look like too much on me. So definitely looking forward to using that again. Um, very excited that I picked up the Pat McGrath highlighter. I think this is so lovely. And when you touch this powder, oh, it's gorgeous. It's just like barely there, but you can also, look at that, it's so pretty. I'm excited about that. I'm happy to have that in my collection. I'm kind of bouncing all over, but the Danessa Myricks Twin Flames Shadow, I definitely want to try this on its own. Um, I think it looks kind of cool on top of that gold, but it definitely muted it a little bit. Um, I've wanted to try these for so long and I've heard such good things, so I'm looking forward to using that again by itself. The Bite Beauty Berry Lipstick was super pretty. Definitely would have looked better with a lip liner. The formula felt really nice. Bite Beauty makes great lipsticks, so I liked that. But I have to say, out of both lip products, this Gucci situation, look at this. It's stunning. I might go buy more colors of this. It's just too good. So pretty. Um, feels very luxurious, as it should. And I think that's one of the things I'm the most excited about. Clear Brow Gel. Definitely, wow. Okay, so it's a pretty thin formula. It doesn't feel too crunchy, but definitely has some hold to it as well. Interesting. Nothing ever usually replaces my Benefit Clear Brow Gel, but I am open to trying new ones, and this one seems really nice so far. And then the setting spray, I mean, I think it contributed to the overall glow. I'm excited to keep using this and see how it works over products I'm more familiar with, for sure. Okay, I hope that I covered everything that I tried. If you are still watching, thank you so much. You deserve an Allure Award as well, just for being here. I appreciate you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the products that I picked up that won awards this year. Let me know in the comments if there were things that you love that won awards, or were there things that you love that you wish would have won awards? Let me know in the comments down below. I definitely think I found some new favorites. Um, off the top of my head, the Liss Foundation, the Beauty Counter Concealer, the Makeup Forever Powder under the eyes, phenomenal. The M Cosmetics Bronzer, super excited. The Pat McGrath Highlighter, did I say that already? <laughs> I don't remember. And the Gucci Lip. Those are the things off the top of my head that I'm like, yeah, I could see those really, really, really making their way into my everyday routine. So that's it for me today. If you guys want to check out any other products, I will have everything that I talked about linked in the description box down below. And if you wanna see what other products won awards, I will have Allure's website in the description box down below as well. That's it, that's the second episode. So that completes this 2021 series. Again, if you didn't see my drugstore version of this video, I will have that linked down below. Stay tuned for my end of the year favorites where I share with you guys what I feel like are award winners. I always look forward to those videos and I usually film them in December at the end of the year. So I'm excited for those. If you're new here, hi, my name is Allie. I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button. And before I forgot my ending, you guys, that's how long this video was. Point is, if you're new here, welcome subscribe, join the family. I would love to have you here. Also click on the notifications bell. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every single week. So if you want three videos a week of beauty content and reviews, I'm your girl. So just subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video from me. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. I hope you have an amazing day. Thanks for sticking with me for this long video. I hope you got cozy and had a snack or a meal because this is probably very long at this point. I love you all so much and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.